Hello everyone, welcome to K-Pop Queen for your daily reactions to all things K-Pop. Okay, I said I was going to keep you all updated on everything that happened on LA, in LA when it came to Super M, and that is what I am going to do. I'm going to tell you about all the events that I went to, a little bit the one, about the ones that I didn't go to, at least what I heard and everything. I'm going to give you all the 411, <laughs> I haven't said that in a long time, <laughs> I'm going to let you all know what happened, and I'm going to tell you all specifically about my time at Ellen, because yes, I did go to Ellen. Now, I just saw something on Twitter that... Um, really altered it altered my own experience by a little bit but I'm gonna, I'll, I'll tell you that later I'll tell you everything so um sit tight get ready to know about super m and la now this is as of uh tuesday october 8th I don't know if anything's happening afterwards I know that they're doing their listening party on spotify but that's like a chat room thing like I don't think they're inviting people like to go and listen to the album with them um not that I heard anyway um the pop-up shop is still happening so people can still go but I don't know if they have any more events in LA I think now they're going to be doing like the buzzfeed teen vogue all sorts of videos are going to be coming out in the next couple of weeks and they're probably going to film them this week so okay let's get started first it was the Capitol records event is that actually what's first? No. Well, yeah, it was. I was going to say it was the village thing, but no, it was the Q&A um, press release thing that they did. I didn't get a ticket to that. <laughs> of course. Not very many people did. It was actually literally a press release, which sort of surprised me. I know that they used that term, but I didn't think they meant it literally. I thought it was just going to be way more like fans and less press and like they would you know, put it up on YouTube and everything, and that was it. But I didn't realize how much press was going to be there. So when I saw all the press, I was like, oh, fuck, this is, like, official. Like, this is the real deal. That was incredible. I loved watching that on Twitter, actually, or, or on YouTube. That was actually really fun watching that at home, so I'm kind of glad I didn't go. I mean, it looked pretty packed in there. Maybe a little bit difficult to see everything if you weren't super close. I'm not really sure, but I'm sure everybody had a great time. I mean, they got to see the boys, and people were really lucky and got to sit behind them when they were watching the music video when it premiered. So that's pretty cool. But I was like, okay, I mean, that's fine. They did say that they were going to let people know, like, um, day of the press release if they had gotten a ticket. But apparently they did it two days before. So I was like, wow, this is a scam. All right, great. Thanks for that. Another thing that sort of ended up being sort of scammy was the Capitol Records event. <sighs> if you've seen my NCT 127 um, Capitol Records event video, you know how difficult that was. And you know how just... A mess it was this one was also a mess now let me okay okay getting the ticket itself um I obviously didn't see the tweet when it happened and by the time I saw the tweet everything had been gone all the tickets have been claimed and of course selfish ass whores were trying to sell the tickets for ridiculous amounts of money people that were not even in LA or planning to come just got tickets and decided you know what I'm going to sell them. I'm going to make an extra buck, which was really fucking, I mean, what utter trash. Just bottom of the barrel scum type of shit. You guys should never get anything you ever want. Thankfully, um, two, two amazing women, two amazing black women saw me in a bind and helped me and my friend out. One girl, Armani, said that I could be her guest, which I just... Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I was at work when she DM'd me like, hey, you can be my guest. I almost started to cry. I was screaming. I was like, <laughs> literally, I was like, <laughs> like this at my desk. My coworker is used to me having little freakouts over Twitter, so he just ignored me. But I was just like, I was losing my shit, and I couldn't believe it. Um, so, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, and you are money. And then another young lady was actually going to fly out here, but it, there were so many events happening, and it was so last minute. She just felt like she couldn't plan the trip, so she gave me her other tickets, so that I, and um, I gave it to my friend Lucia, so that's how the both of us were able to go. Thank you so much to you two women. You guys really helped out some fans in a desperate bind. I will never, ever, ever forget the kindness that you guys showed us. But, yeah, we I remember we were trying to do the raffle thing that the KISS radio, I heard radio people were trying to do and I don't even know if people got those passes I think that might have been that might have just not happened because I remember they also are doing the hashtag which we also tried to do but I didn't hear anyone get those tickets I don't know if anyone did if you did get those iHeartRadio tickets I would love to know if you got four passes and if you went and where you were and all of that because listen Obviously, the line started super fucking early in the morning. The concert wasn't until 7, right? And they weren't going to let people in until 4, and they that didn't happen, okay? They let in people much later, okay? Just so you know, right? And people were there very, very early. Um, that doesn't surprise me. I was aiming to get there around, like, 
one ish and I got there at two, which that's a low for me. I really thought I was going to have my shit together and I did not have it together that day. I was trying to like do way too much for the week and just like prep myself and I just did not get myself and I got there at two. <laughs> All right. So I was at the back of the line with, you know, okay. Yeah. Right. And, um, eventually maybe after like an Maybe like after an hour, the line moves so fast down the block that I'm eventually at the road, right at the end of the road where the village is, where they had the merchandise truck and the food trucks and the big screen playing the music videos and stuff. So I'm pretty much on that, that corner, Hollywood and Vine, just waiting to get in. And I thought it was waiting to get into the village. But after talking to some people and, you know, finally things clicking in my head, it was actually the line just to get inside to the concert. And that if you left the line, you would have to go to the back and you wouldn't like you wouldn't get the spot that you wanted. So people were staying in the line. They didn't get to enjoy the village, which kind of sucked, you know, because my friend Lucia, she did show up. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to go grab something. Just hold our spot in line. And it was a cool village. I'm not going to like Capitol Records did something. They did two things. They did really great by capping off how many tickets there were because they didn't do that for NCT and that was such a fucking mess. So I'm glad that they did that, but I'm not glad that uh, I played myself. I look like a fucking clown because I didn't get a ticket when they happened. And I was just like, it was like, wow, you took my advice, but you didn't include me in it. Fucking amazing. it finally starts to move maybe around like 4 45 ish I'll just say like before five somewhere around there or maybe like right after five you know they were they were behind schedule with things okay the village didn't start until maybe like 2 45 ish close to three so the line getting into the concert was also behind schedule they built the whole sound stage they built the lights and everything it was a, it was pretty incredible and they had been teasing it on twitter for a while now and you could see it when you're in the line and so we go in, we show off our wristbands, and the first thing we notice is, okay, red wristbands this way, white wristbands that way, but we had black wristbands. So we were like, why is this already a mess? Like, they don't know the color of the wristbands? Come on, y'all, get it together. But that one's going that way, the red ones clearly said VIP, so we were like, okay, we're just gonna go this way. I don't know why it says white, but that's where we're gonna go. So we're just standing behind everyone. We're just kind of like waiting when suddenly a guard comes over and is like, everyone with a black wristband, come this way. And I was like, Ugh. my instincts in that moment told me to stay put. They were like, do not move. All right. But Lucille was like, oh, maybe it's a different place. Maybe we're going to stand in the front. And I was like, OK, we'll go see. And so we start following everyone. We start filing out and they place us outside of the venue behind the fence. I was like, wait, we can't see the stage. We can't see over the fence, obviously. It's like a 10 foot fence. How the fuck are we gonna see the stage? Are we supposed to stare at the screens? Like what is going on? So everyone with the black earth man is outside of the venue, cannot see the stage. We're literally on the side and we can we can barely look over the fence. You have to like literally look up to see what's going on. Why are we outside of the venue? We have tickets, but here we are standing here like we're fucking poor. It's poverty. And we're like, this cannot be the plan. You could not have planned to have us outside of the venue and just stand there for like an hour and a half before the concert goes on. I was having fucking Jimmy Kimmel flashbacks when I was looking at NCT 127 through the fence. Like I was really like, I was like, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm still back there. I still have my clown makeup on. What the fuck is this shit? This cannot be right. But that's what they did. They had everyone with a black wristband, which was a pretty, it was a large group of people outside of the, the venue. I mean, it was ridiculous. I have to stand outside of the venue because you can't plan for these things. Capital records. 
I know that you raised the stage, but you didn't do the setting right. We were outside of the venue. We couldn't see them at all from the fence. How the, like, I cannot believe someone really said, oh, place them outside of this metal fence. Of course they can see over the 10 foot fence. Like, I just, like, I, 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 Still waiting out here, watching these. We're not inside. They let certain people in and not the rest, so. couldn't see them I and mean, we, we have to look at the screen for most of the time and there were some times that the members would come over like Mark and Ten were doing their choreo for I think it was Supercar on our side and so we got to see them and that was cool and then Kai came over to our side and was just waving and like singing and doing his part and I was like see this is so great but we, but again because they didn't set it up properly they didn't have lights on the side they were not on when he was waving and, and saying hi so it was pretty much just like a shadow I mean you knew it was him but it was just like you could really barely see him <laughs> Um, besides that, I mean, I had fun. It was fun. People outside, the people outside were cool. We were all trying to have a good time, just trying to make light of the situation that we were in. And yeah, it was just, it was a fun time seeing everyone there and just, yeah, just being around and being able to see the boys for the first time. And I would also like to point out that they started barking at us. We did not start barking at them. Okay, that was all them. We were just responding. It was a call and response. We were not wiling out. Okay. <laughs> so yes. Okay, after that, um, event was the Twitter Blue Room event where the first 150 people in line for the pop-up show or pop-up store would get invited inside to where they were doing their Twitter Q&A. Lucia and I, we, at first we were like, yeah, we're going to get there. What time do we have to get there? Probably 6 a.m. even though it's at 12. I mean, we got to get there super early. And we both, after we we saw the concert and everything ended, we were like, yeah, we're not doing this. <laughs> I cannot move. My feet hurt. My legs hurt. My back hurts. My head hurts. Everything hurts. We're standing for so long. Then we went to the Barnes & Noble uh, fan signing event, even though we didn't have a ticket. Again, a fucking mess. Now this one was probably the worst out of all of them. The event was happening at the Barnes Nobles at the Grove, where a lot of people do um, book signings and stuff. It's a popular place to do these sort of things. But the problem was is that they had tweeted out the link and were like, a couple days before, and were like, this is the link, like, tickets go on sale at 3 tomorrow or something, like, be ready, right? A couple hours before the event, before the ticket sales was supposed to happen, they delete the um, link and everyone's like, huh? How are we supposed to buy our tickets? The link isn't there. Like, what the fuck is going on? We want to sign in and have our cards ready, right? Apparently someone emails or calls the people there and they're like, Corbett said to take it down. It wasn't supposed to be up in the first place, which... Oh my god. Duh. Oh, right? So, they tweet at the link at like noon and it doesn't work. It's broken for like maybe three minutes, which is a lot of time when it comes to getting a, tickets for a K-pop event. You guys know this. We, I was panicking. I was like, I don't even know what to do. Like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to get this ticket? Like, fix the link. I tweeted at them. Finally, after a couple minutes, it starts to work, right? But obviously at this point, I mean, it's, it's nearly impossible to get a ticket. Like, it is nearly impossible. It sells out almost immediately. And it also kicked people out of the line. Like, Lucia was in the checkout. She had the ticket, but it timed out 
because too many people were trying to buy tickets at the same time. So it kicked out people and just, it timed her out and she didn't get her ticket. Same thing happened to me. I was in the line waiting. It kicked me out. I kept trying. I got into the line. I got to the checkout and it kicked me out. Like I was just like, I was like, God, why don't you want me there? <laughs> why do you not want me to see these boys? You know I love them. You know I want to be there. What the fuck? Like, why can't I have nice things, right? So we didn't get tickets because of all of that wahala. I mean, it was it was such a mess. And the people, you know what? I, I'm just going to say it. A lot of people that got tickets were, like, ungrateful. Like, I'm sorry. I could not believe the sheer amount of people they were like, ooh, I got this person, but I wanted them. Or, ooh, we're going to make a group so that we can get our favorite person. Like, are you out of your fucking mind? You need to be grateful that they're even here and that they're willing to do all of this. Like, whoever you get assigned to for the fan signing, you should have just been so great and happy. Like, I read so many different stories of girls that were just so upset that they had their CD signed by someone that they didn't like, even though I was out here looking like a fucking dumbass clown makeup set and prime not going anywhere okay outside of the barnes and nobles just like devastated that i didn't get a ticket like if you get on twitter you'll see so many people that were just like ungrateful just just i mean just really awful just being like i didn't want this person or th there were some people that were not even fans they didn't even know who they were they had no idea who the boys were what their names were and yet they still got a ticket and i was like i was like are you like what the fuck are you fucking kidding me that's the theme for this video are you fucking kidding me I shouldn't have gone. Lucia and I should not have gone. I was hoping somewhere in my mind, I'm so fucking dumb. I was like, maybe someone will see me and they'll be like, hey, you, do you want to go into the fan site? And I'll be like, me? Me? And they'll be like, yeah, you, get in the line. And then I'll be able to go and see them, like some dumbass fantasy, like I'm fucking nine or some shit. Like, I just, I <laughs> could not believe how much faith I had in being able to see them. But I didn't see them at all. Um... Um, our friend Ashley did get into this fan signing and she got her um, CD signed by Mark. And so she was telling us about it and we were walking past the the window because you could, the Barnes & Noble has a lot of windows so you could sort of see different things. And she was like, I think that one's Mark. And I saw, and she was pointing to some guy in like a white shirt and I was like, oh my gosh, Mark Lee, <laughs> notice me from down here, right? Uh, we've been at Barnes & Noble's for a couple hours now. Super M is definitely inside. We thought maybe they'd walk through the front gate you know what, let me just put my clown makeup on right now, okay? Like, it's just been a rough day. See that white shirt man? I know y'all don't, but that's Mark Lee. I see him and that's all that matters. There are some more people getting their fan sign album things. And those people are not us. They are not us. <laughs> And so as we're walking, we are waiting for the vans to leave because we're just kind of hoping that we catch a glimpse of them. And we do catch a glimpse of them from far away across the street. Um, there's so much security just waiting for that van to leave. I was like, y'all, I don't know about this. I ain't trying to do all this. I am about to bum rush a fucking van. Am I going to win against a van? What? <laughs> Why would you need this much security to stop people from running in the streets? And then I remembered who I was dealing with, and I was like, actually, maybe you're right. You do need this much security. It's a left turn they're making. Why are there so many people in black? Just for the van. Out of Barnes and Nobles, my God. I don't know why the security guard thinks I'm gonna jump into the street. Ma'am, for a car making a left turn? I won't do it, I swear. Oh my God, you cannot see anything. Oh, wait, wait! I can see them, I can see them, I can see them. Hi, hi! Do you see them waving their hands? Yes, I do. I think that was Lucas! That's Kai right there! I can tell by their hair because I'm blind, so I gotta memorize other things! So after the Barnes Nobles was the Long Beach event. Of course, I didn't get a ticket to that. I <laughs> Some people did get both. They got Barnes and Nobles and Long Beach. So that's great. The thing about this one was, was that although there were a lot of people at Barnes and Nobles, and I honestly wasn't sure if they were going to be able to get through everyone, but they did. Um, they maybe went maybe 15 minutes over, but they got through everyone, which was really good. I think there was like... 
Okay, at first I thought it was maybe 500 people, but upon hearing different people, it was maybe 1,400, 1,500 people. So I was like, what the fuck? How did I not get a fucking ticket? But all you whores did. Anyway, Long Beach one was much smaller and not everyone got um, a thing signed despite like signing up and being reserved and stuff. And I think they paid for the album before. I'm not entirely sure, but they like ran out of albums and a lot of people did not get to go into the fan sign events. So I was like, oh, this is messy to the max. Today though, fucking finally, I got tickets to Ellen to go see Super M perform. Let me say something. I had my notifications on the minute I saw that Super M was going to perform. And when I saw that bitch, I li literally, it said, Ellen tweets, are you a fan of Super? Click! Ellen, please pick me. I need to see them, right? I was like so fast with that. And I attached pictures of my fucking t-shirt design because I was like, look at what I did. I'm such a huge fan. <laughs> right? And then I get an email back while I'm in line at Capitol Records, standing in that fucking sun, like, this isn't a confirmation. Email, send your information and a picture and we'll let you know if there's still space. So I was like, girl, please save me. Give me my positive energy. Like, please make sure that I get, let me get this ticket. And they emailed back like, yeah, congratulations. You have two tickets. I got there maybe around like 10, 15, because I wasn't sure how this was going to go. Like, do I need to get the early to line up i know i have a ticket but like what's the deal right um if you let me just say this if you ever get a ticket to ellen and um you you have it you're not standby or anything you don't have to get there early you can get there at like a decent time like is checking was uh started or was over at one or something so if you got there maybe at like i don't know noon or 12 30 you would have been fine just so you know because i sat there for hours doing nothing but using my data and just wondering what the fuck was going on just wait until maybe like 1 30 and that's when they take us through security um to check our bags and stuff just to make sure we don't have any shit in there and um then they line us up and um they take us into the hallway um inside of the studio and we're just like watching the music performances from before we're like you know getting ready to go in there and the coordinator is just like you know it's good to have your signs or whatever and your light sticks but just keep them down low so that you don't hit the cameras that sort of stuff and um, we're gonna put you guys in a specific way to make sure that are, you don't hit our cameras. Like we have this very specific vision for this. And we're like, oh, okay, you know, what does this mean? What does that mean? You know? So um, maybe around two, after two, 2.30, something like that. Um, we go inside to the event, or we go inside to Ellen to go and see them perform. And I see the way that they have it set up and I don't like it. They're on the side and I was behind everyone. And let me just, I don't understand why tall people are so fucking rude. Like, I know you want to see them, but you can see them over my head. I'm shorter than you. I should be standing in front of you. Like, I know you want to be close, but we can all have a good time if you just stood in the back. Like, I this is like basic like this is such basic i don't know fucking geometry or something like just think about it if i stand in front of you i can't block your view because i'm shorter than you but if you stand in front of me all you're gonna do is block my view like I, I, so all the tall people had crowded forward uh and just made it impossible for anyone to see over them so i was in the back jumping like a fucking kangaroo or some shit <laughs> trying to see the boys looking in between like heads and shoulders and like I caught glimpses of them and they were very close so it was like it was like oh my god <laughs> let me back up <laughs> yeah, no. they were pretty close how they had had a set up but it was just like I didn't really get to see anything like I just saw you know glimpses of faces and stuff so I guess I gotta watch the video <laughs> the Emlyn video when it drops tomorrow <laughs> to see what the performance looked like I mean I'm sure it was cool but it was just kind of annoying the way people did it. Then they had to sit down and they did a segment like with them like talking, which I wasn't expecting. I thought they were only going to do the songs and there wouldn't be a segment Um, because they didn't do that for Monster X. And I was like, why are you doing that for Monster X? That's so interesting. But we're going to do it for Super M. Okay. I mean, it's fine. You know, whatever. So they came out um, after they did the performance and we're all sitting like right behind the seats. Um where they're sitting so you know whatever it's like hey hi we're really close and like we're really close like oh my god ten is a human being <laughs> like Temin is real like kai i can see you like taeyong are this is you're a person like they are so stunning in person like i couldn't believe that these people that i'm like listening to and watching their music videos like they are genuinely real 
people in front of my eyes, okay? Glasses on, can see everything. They are stunning. They did I Can't Stand the Rain, and again, just sort of glimpses of everyone, but I was in the back, <laughs> tone deaf as fuck, singing I Can't Stand the Rain, you know, trying to like dance along, trying to hit backhands notes, but failing, and just having a really good time in the end, because I was like, I don't really think I'm gonna be able to see most of you, I'll just do a little glimpse and glimpse, and I'll sing and dance along, but yeah. I had a pretty good time. I had a pretty good time despite not really getting to see them that much. And, um, yeah, some girls got some high fives and some handshakes. I mean, I was like, I can't reach over, y'all. I, was, I wasn't in the front. I was maybe, like, the third row behind them in the seats. So I was like, oh, I'm not going to reach over, y'all. I'll just wave and say hi and smile. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, that was the whole Ellen thing. Oh, and she gave us albums, which, okay, thank you, my third United album. Because <laughs> I pre-ordered, I'm going to the concert, and I got one, and I went to Ellen and got one. So afterwards, everyone's, like, standing outside the parking thing, and I'm like, oh, what are they doing? And Lucia's like, oh, they're trading photo cards. And I was like, oh, okay. And then as we're leaving, we see them still standing there, and I'm like, oh, they're waiting for them, like they did at Barnes & Noble's. And we're like, we're not going to do this Barnes & Noble shit again. Like, are you kidding me? We saw, an empty, we saw a black van. I don't want to do this, right? Come to find out on Twitter, this is the thing that sort of – put a dent in my Ellen experience, that Taeyong had decided to open the door, have the car slow down, and wave at fans. That was Super M in LA. A lot of mess, but still a lot of fun nevertheless. So yeah, I can't wait till the tour. I'm, def I'm going in February with Ashley and Lucia at the Forum. This is going to be super, super exciting. The tour starts in November, which... I mean, it, it's like we started October, so it's very soon. Um, I think they're going to go to New York next. I, I would be surprised if they didn't go to New York, honestly, given how this is supposed to be like a Western, you know, sort of thing. And they're supposed to be doing all these things. So I would be surprised if they didn't go to New York after this. So hopefully some of you guys can get up there and go see them. And they announce that soon and, you know. You can plan those sort of things. I also hope that they do another fan signing in LA, like, I don't know, maybe on Thursday or Friday. Like, I just really hope that I get to at least see them one time. I <laughs> just get to meet them at least. So, yes. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Tell me about your Super M in LA events. Tell me everything, okay? You can comment below. You can tweet at me, and I'll be back with another video. Bye, guys.